What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video today. I'll be doing another NASCAR Silly Season update where I'll recap everything that's happened through the 2024, the 2025 NASCAR Silly Season. So anyways, let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. We're going by Star Talk about Honda. Early in this year, around January to February, there's was a lot of talk and conversations about Honda potentially joining NASCAR. There's been no update as of recently. In the last month or so, there was some talks that the only way Honda would come into sport is if new hybrid systems come in to the engines, which should come in as early as 2026 or maybe 2027. The earliest Honda could come in is 2026, but they're certainly interested in potentially joining NASCAR as early as 2026 or 2027. Then in late February to early March, Kurt Busch teased a potential return to NASCAR. Now, Kurt Busch has also been teasing that potentially could be altogether retired at this point, and he still needs to be medically cleared to come back to the sport. But Kurt Busch has indicated that maybe he wants to make a one-off return in the future. Another sport like Enza go to different tracks as well. But Kurt Busch seems to be a little interested in potentially returning to NASCAR as he's been at more tracks, especially as of recently. Throughout this year, there's been a lot of talk and chatter that Andretti Global could be joining NASCAR in the future. Mario Andretti very recently was on the Dale Jr. Dallas saying that Michael and him hope to be around in NASCAR in the not so distant future. We do know they're interested in working up with Spire Motorsports considering that Gamebridge has a very big association with the Andretti brand and also Spire Motorsports. There is a chance of possibly that Andretti Global could buy up Spire Motorsports altogether and they could join NASCAR in the not so distant future. Then in late April to May, Matt DiBenedetto spoke about driving for Viking Motorsports around the Richmond weekend, and he's hoping to potentially be full-time with them in 2025. Matt DiBenedetto's done really solid with Viking Motorsports so far this season, and there is a chance and possibility that in the 2025 year, Matt DiBenedetto could be driving full-time for Viking Motorsports in 2025. Then in late April to early May, there began to be some rumors and rumors that JTG Doherty Racing could be having some ownership changes in 2025. The rumor right now is that Kroger could be leaving at the end of the 2024 season and could be headed to Joe Gibbs Racing. They're looking to go over and sponsor some spots to potentially leave with Mark Trix Jr.'s impending retirement going into next year. Kroger sounds like could be leaving, and that would mean a new ownership change for Tad and Jody Koshector as they'll be going over to Joe Gibbs Racing more than likely next season. RFK Racing has been interested and in, been looking to expand into the NASCAR Cup Series, and they do want to have a third team in the future, but they do need a charter for that to get done. Obviously, RFK Racing and Brad has stated recently they're not buying one of the Stuart Haas Racing charters, but they're looking to expand in the not-so-distant future. RFK has been very successful, and they could be a team that could expand in 2025 or 2026. Then in early May, Brody Kaseki confirmed that he would not be returning to NASCAR in 2024, but he could race in NASCAR in 2025. There's been some issues at Erebus Racing. Obviously, him and Peter Adelton had a fallout, unfortunately, and that's why we haven't seen Brody Kaseki race in NASCAR in the near future. Brody could, though, come back in 2025, and my guess it will most likely be with RCR if he decides to return to NASCAR. Then it was announced in early May that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has signed a three-year contract extension with JTG Doherty Racing to continue driving a number 47 car. While it's unclear who this basically the team will be and who will be the owners of the organization, we do know for sure that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to stick around and continue driving the 47 car at least through the next few years and will stay in the 47 car in 2025. Now let's talk about Haley Deegan and her future NASCAR. She's been struggling so far this year in 2024 and has not been having a good year with only two finishes inside the top 15 and only four finishes inside the top 20. She is a candidate from what I understand to maybe potentially be a candidate for the Haas factory team and organization, but I do think she could also stay with AM Racing. But she also could go back down to the truck series because she's been absolutely not having a good year so far. She's been struggling so far in 2024. Then in early May, there began to be some indications about Hyundai potentially joining NASCAR. They're very interested along with Honda. Now, they're going to have a much tougher time getting in to NASCAR considering the fact that Honda is also looking to get in. But it's going to be much tougher for them to get into sport as there are some teams that are not looking to go and switch over currently at the moment. But we could see Hyundai join the NASCAR Cup Series in the not-so-distant future. 
Then it was announced in early to middle May that Michael Madow would be leaving Farmer Motorsports at the end of 2024 and joining Spire Motorsports in 2025, driving the number 71 car in a multi-year deal. He was looking for stability and looking to be there for multiple years and is getting a bigger pay increase starting in 2025. He will officially head over to Spire Motorsports starting in the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series season. Now let's talk about Connor Zilich. Connor Zilich is going to run select NASCAR races in 2024, but he could run full-time in the Xfinity Series in 2022. 2025. Indications say it could be with Junior Motorsports as Connor will make select starts in his Finney with Junior Motorsports. He's been doing a really good job in the lower series. Obviously won in the LMP2 class in Sebring and also in Daytona earlier this year. He'll be looking to potentially run full-time in NASCAR potentially in 2025. Then it was announced after Brad Zosky won at Darlington that Chris Buescher signed a multi-year contract extension with RFK Racing during the offseason. Chris Buescher has been doing a really good job with RFK. Won three races last year while he's still looking for his first win of the year. He'll stick around with RFK Racing for the near future and did sign a multi-year extension with the RFK Racing Group. Legacy Motor Club has been interested in looking to expand, and they were one of the teams that was looking to acquire a Stuart Haas Racing Charter. However, Legacy is not expected to acquire an SHR Charter, and I don't know if they're going to expand to three full-time cars in 2025. If they do, it will likely be with the number 84 car, but they're interested in expanding, and maybe someone like Eric Amrol could go over there in 2025. Now let's talk about Junior Motorsports. Junior Motorsports has been very interested in going cup racing over the last four or five years. However, very recently, Dale Jr. stated that they are not looking to acquire a charter currently at the moment, and they would need to basically go and either invest or bring their team up all together. As of right now, they're not planning to do that currently at the moment. They've been interested in getting a charter, but as like I said, I don't expect Junior Motorsports to be full-time in cup. I could see them going part-time in 2025, but they would need a charter if they want to go full-time in 2025. There were some rumors and chatter early in the season that Colin Racing could be selling charters and merging with Trackhouse. But Chris Sorry stated in early May that Colin Racing is not selling charters and not merging with Trackhouse. Now, they could somehow still sell a charter at the end of the season with the money issues they're having with their Cup Series program, but they've been struggling immensely in Cup. And that's why the rumors kind of came around about them potentially selling a charter. But they could somehow, some way, still sell a charter to a team like Trackhouse in the not so distant future. During the Coca-Cola 600 weekend, Carl Lover spoke to the media about getting in the NASCAR of fame, and he says he's not planning to return to NASCAR to drive. However, he basically said the reason is because of commitment. However, he's not completely out of the realm of returning to NASCAR as a commentator. He says he's interested in getting in a TV booth, potentially going to NBC, potentially going to Amazon next year, or going to Fox. He really enjoyed the commentary side of things, and Carl Edwards could potentially make a comeback to NASCAR, at least in a commentary role. But right now, at this moment, Carl Edwards is not going to come back to drive, but could come back in a booth role. During an article written by Jordan Bianchi, it was reported that Bubba Walls is close to signing a multi-year extension with 2311 Racing. This technically is a contract year for Bubba Walls at 2311 Racing, but there's a really good chance that that extension is going to be announced in the not so distant future. But going into 2025, Bubba Walls will sign an extension and will stay with 2311 Racing for the next couple of years in the number 23 car starting in 2025. During that same Jordan Bianchi article, he reported that Austin Hill had also signed a multi-year extension with Rich Schultz Racing to continue driving number three car. There has been some rumors in chatter that Austin Hill could also retire at the end of the year with Bass for Shops, potentially going basically with the commitment of Bass Raps and Noah Gregson. But Austin Hill, as of right now, did sign a three-year extension to continue driving the number three car going forward. Then it was announced in late May to early June that Stuart Haas Racing will shut down at the end of 2024. While Gene Haas is not getting out of the sport altogether, we know that SHR is going away at the end of the season. We are expecting those charters to go to different teams, and all the drivers are currently free agents at this particular moment. SHR had a lot of success in the sport, but they will be gone at the end of 2024. One of the teams that's looking to get a charter is 2311 Racing. They are looking to expand in 2025, and they are expected to acquire one of the Stuart Haas Racing charters. Corey Heim and Riley Harris are the current favorites to get into that third 2311 Racing seat in 2025. They could also get some of the Kerber Scarlers if they decide to come out of retirement, but 2311 Racing will look to be expanding in 2025. 
Another team that's expected to acquire Stewart Racing Charter is Trackhouse Racing. They're also looking to expand in 2025. They got four drivers under contract for three seats. So we know there's a charter clause coming in potentially in the 2025 season, but Trackhouse Racing will be looking to expand next year. One team that we know for sure that has acquired a third charter is Front Row Motorsports. They will have three cars in 2025. They bought that charter for $20 million off of Stuart Haas Racing, and they were looking to move into Stuart Haas Racing shop next year. However, that unfortunately will not be happening. But Front Row Motorsports is going to expand and be a three-car organization in 2025. Then it was announced about three weeks ago that Cam Waters will be returning to supercars in 2025. There have been some rumors that Cam Waters could be coming over to NASCAR on a full-time basis, along with drivers like Will Brown and Brody Kostecki. But as of right now, Cam Waters is going to be committed and will stick with supercars in the 2025 season. During media availabilities in early June, Joseph Newgarden said he's interested in doing the double. He wants to do the Coke 600 and the Indy 500 on the same day. Joseph Newgarden in the past has expressed interest in coming over and racing in NASCAR, and there's a chance he could do that in the not-so-distant future. Then during early June, it was announced that Todd Gillen has signed a multi-year contract extension with Front Row Motorsports. The number is to be announced at this point and to be determined, but many speculate he's going to stay in the number 38 car next year. Todd Gillen's been doing a really good job of Front Row this year and will be looking to grow with Front Row Motorsports in 2025. Daniel Suarez spoke to Bob Pockets very recently and it's expected that he is expected to sign a multi-year contract extension with Trackhouse Racing. While the terms are not disclosed, many are expecting that it's going to be a two to three year extension. Despite not having the greatest performance over Stuart Haas, not SHR, Trackhouse Racing recently, Daniel Suarez brings a lot of funding and a lot of sponsorship to the table and he probably will be back with Trackhouse in 2025 in the 99 car. In an article that was released by Pipe Pop Pockers, Chandler Smith has a rumor to potentially join, be joining the Cup Series in 2025. There's not a lot of rides available, however. We don't expect him to go to the 19. We also don't expect him to go over to 20 through 11. I think Legacy could be an option for Chandler Smith in 2025, but there is a chance he could move up to the Cup Series of his performance in 2025. Another driver who could move up the cup in 2025 is Sam Mayer. And Sam Mayer expressed frustration about that. Sam Mayer wants to move up to the cup series in the 2025 season. He's been doing a really good job in Xfinity. Has tied for the most wins with John Hunter Nemechek in Xfinity in the last 30 races. He's been doing a really good job over Junior Motorsports. If Junior Motorsports moves up the cup, I think he could be a prime candidate to make the jump up in 2025. Another driver that can move up is Christian Eckes. According to Bob Pockers, Christian Eckes could join the Cup Series on a part-time basis or full-time in 2025. Some indications have stated he could go to a team like Hog Racing or Rick Ware, but Christian Eckes is in the running to move up to the Cup Series in the 2025 season. His performance has been very solid overall. Could be raced against guys like Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson next year. Christian Eckes could be moving up the Cup in 2025. Now let's talk about Noah Gregson. There's been rumors and speculation that Noah Gregson could be joining Richard Childress Racing in 2025. I already mentioned Austin Dillon, but the reason he could join RSR is because of the Bass Pro Shops connection. It's expected that Bass Pro will not be back at Joe Gibbs Racing, and they're looking to be fully committed to RCR going to 2025. Now, most likely they're going to need a third charter for this to happen, but Noah Gregson could in fact be headed over to Richard Childress Racing in the 2025 season. Another driver who could be moving up to the Cup Series in 2025 full-time is Shane Van Gisburg. And according to multiple reports out there, Trackhouse is in a very difficult position. They have to choose between SVG and Zane Smith. And many are expecting that Shane Van Gisbergen is going to get that third seat at Trackhouse Racing and Cup full-time. He's already won two races in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and I, he's done a solid job and has sponsorship funny with him. Companies like Red Bull and WeatherTech are committed to Shane Van Gisbergen. So there's a really good chance and possibility that we are going to see Shane Van Gisbergen and Cup, and I think it likely will be with Trackhouse Racing. Look, don't disrespect Zane Smith, but Shane Van Gisbergen, in my opinion, is earned a better opportunity and right to be in the Cup Series next year. That means most likely Zane Smith is going to be out of track house at the end of this year. If they do cards, go to this three-car rule, that's going to be taking place with a new charter agreement. Now, where could Zane Smith end up? He could go to front row, but I think most likely goes to Colic Racing. 
Kolg is looking to have a couple of full-time cars in 2025 unless they sell a charter. Zane has driven for Kolg in the past. It sounds like Zane likely, though, however, will be out of track house at the end of the year if they go to this three-car rule, and he'll probably be going to Kolg Racing in 2025. Now let's talk about Riley Hertz. There has rumors that Corey Heim could be driving that third 2311 racing seat, but I already mentioned this. Riley Hertz could join 2311 racing in 2025. He brings sponsorship and funding. There's been rumors and speculation that Riley Herbst's father, with the Herbst branding and the Terribles group, has been looking to really get Riley into the Cup Series next year. He could go to Wood Brothers, and he could go to a team like Front Row, but Riley Herbst could be a candidate for 2311 Racing in 2025. Then it was announced about a little over a week ago that Mar Truck Jr. will in fact retire from full-time NASCAR Cup Series racing in 2025 at the end of this year. But he could run part-time with 2311 Racing. Mar Truck Jr. has had a lot of success in the NASCAR Cup Series. And after a few years of waiting to make the decision, he finally made the decision to go ahead and retire from full-time racing. He's expected to be an ambassador for Joe Gibbs Racing going forward in a run-select race in Xfinity with JGR, maybe some Truck Series races, and also likely run part-time with 2311 Racing in 2025. During media availabilities at Iowa Speedway, Kyle Busch confirmed that he would be returning to Rich Schultz Racing in 2025 as they have picked up his option for 2025. However, Kyle Busch has stated that if Rick had called him to go over back to Hendrick or Joe called him back to go to Joe Gibbs Racing, he would take the chance and opportunity. He's been struggling RCR so far this year, but as of right now, Kyle Busch is going to be sticking around and driving the number 8 car for the foreseeable future in 2025. Another driver that confirmed that they'll be back at a certain organization is Justin Haley. He confirmed that he will be returning to Rick or Racing in 2025. There have been some indications that he could be going to the Wood Brothers next year, but because of the fact that he's been really solid with Rick Ware Racing, there's some teams like 2311 Racing and, of course, the Wood Brothers that are looking at him for 2025. But at this particular moment in point, Justin Haley is going to stick around and drive the number 51 car in 2025. Now let's talk about Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest could be returning to the NASCAR Xfinity Series in 2025. He could run part-time in Cup and could go to Front Row Motorsports, but there have been some indications as of recently that Ryan Priest could be going to the Xfinity Series in 2025. There's not really a good Cup ride available right now at the moment. He probably will be in the Xfinity Series more than likely as he does bring a little spot shift in funding to the table. Another driver that's looking for a ride is Josh Berry. Josh Berry, according to recent reports, is the lead candidate for the 21 car for 2025. Josh Berry has also been indicated to potentially be going to Front Row Motorsports in the 2025 season, but there's a really good chance and opportunity that Josh Berry will be driving the 21 car for the Woodburners next year. If you get Josh Berry and Ronnie Chose together, I think both those guys are going to be a dynamic duo, and I think they're going to bring a lot of success to the table if they do, in fact, head over to the Wood Brothers in 2025. There's a chance it could end up happening. This means that Harrison Burton will likely be out of the Wood Brothers at the end of this season. Now, Harrison Burton is likely going to be back in the NASCAR Xfinity Series next year, and there's rumors he'll be going to the new Haas factory team starting in 2025. Look, no disrespect to Harrison Burton. He's been struggling. Ryan Blaney did better, Paul Menard did better, and of course, Matt Benedetto did a lot better in that seat. So I do think that you're going to see Harrison Burton more than likely out of the Wood Brothers at the end of the year and back in the Xfinity Series in 2025. Speaking of the Haas factory team, it was announced last weekend that Gene Haas will retain one of the Stewart Haas Racing Charters and has formed the new Haas factory team. They will have one Cup Series team and two NASCAR Xfinity Series teams. Joe Custer is going to manage the operations. They are going to stick with Ford in 2025. And Cole Custer is the current favorite to drive for their Cup Series program. It makes a lot of sense. Cole's been rumored to potentially go into front row motorsports as well. But Cole Custer, if they does go cup racing, I think it'll be the double zero. For their Xfinity program, I think there's three or four drivers who are candidates. Ryan Priest, of course, Haley Deegan, Harrison Burton, and Matt Benedetto. Most likely, I think it's going to end up being Ryan Priest and Harrison Burton next year. But we do know that Gene Haas is going to retain a charter and keep the Haas factory team going around in 2025. And finally, let's talk about Chase Briscoe. Chris Bell accidentally revealed that Chase Briscoe is going to be driving the 19 car for Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025, with Jane Small expected to be the crew chief. 
By the time many of you watch this video at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time later today, and probably by the time you're watching this, it'll be announced that Chase Briscoe is going to be in that seat. Chase Briscoe has earned a chance and an opportunity, but the big reason he's getting the opportunity is because of funding and sponsorship he brings. It'll be announced here later today that Chase Briscoe will be going to that seat in 2025. So those are the big indications. A couple other notes. Roger Carruth. There were rumors and speculation he can move up to Xfinity next year and drive in the Hendrick car. With his connection with Hendrick cars, and now while he's been racing in the truck series recently, I think there's a chance he does move up to the Xfinity series next year. The other one is Carson Quaffle. Carson Quaffle has been rumored to potentially be full-time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series next year. He's had a couple top fives already with Junior Motorsports. I think there's a chance he does move up to NASCAR Xfinity Series in 2025. So, that is going to be it for the NASCAR Silly Season update. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Notifications on to if I win a video, it does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Link the description below with that, and comment your thoughts below on today's video. What thoughts about the Silly Season update? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. Later this morning, you're going to see the NASCAR Truck Series race picks for National Super Speedway. Then we might see a Chase Briscoe video today. If not, you'll see then the NASCAR news video dropping tomorrow. And we'll also have the Xfinity Series race picks on Wednesday as well. Got a lot of great content dropping that I cannot wait for you guys to check out. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.